Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video we will take a look at the molecular script. I personally think that there are too few tutorials about this topic out there, and the ones that are, are a bit too long for my taste. So let's try to turn this model of a can into self-colliding particles quick and easily. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider liking and subscribing, because I upload a new video every Saturday, and with that said, let's get straight into the tutorial. For this we of course need a fitting scene. You can see that I added in a ground plane and this model of a can. This model is also fully textured and ready to be rendered. Now let's start creating our particles. For this we of course need the molecular script to be installed. This is just an external add-on which you can download off of this website. But I will also put a link for this in the video description. So now I will start by going into wireframe and selecting our can. Now we can add in a particle system. I want the particles to come in on frame 1, so I'm going to set the start and end frame to frame 1. Let's also set the source from faces to volume and from jittered to grid. Now all the particles are aligned. Because we want these particles to look a bit like sand grains, we have to change the size. So go under viewport display and because the diameter of a grain of sand is about 1mm, we can change this to one millimeter just like this. Now we also have to change the render scale to the same size. So copy and paste it in here but make sure that you delete the M behind the number. And now we can see that we get a grid. Make sure that the scale of your model is applied and we can then also apply the scale of our ground plane because in a physics simulation the scale should always be correct. Now we have to somehow replace these particles with a mesh. So let's add in a sphere and move it to the side. Now under render we can select object and then our sphere and you can see that it has the same size. But when working with particles I don't want the sphere in the viewport because this will just cause lag. So let's change under viewport display the display type back to point. Now we have to up the particle count because we want these particles to have no space between them. So let's up the resolution of our grid and you can see by just dragging you can get to a resolution of 50 but this is not enough. So let's click in there and use a resolution of for example 70 and this is almost enough but we can go a bit higher and I think that 75 is just about right. Okay now we have the particles in place but if we play the animation you can see they just fall straight down. This is because this plane doesn't have any physics properties. So let's add in collision and I also want damping and friction to be around about 0.5 or 0.6. And if we play this animation now, you can see that this is happening. This is because the particles don't have any self-collision. So we need to use the molecular script. But firstly, let's go back to our can and under physics, deflection, check size deflect. Okay, now if you have the molecular script add-on installed, you should see a new tab around here which says molecular script. Let's check this. The molecular script is pretty intuitive. We can firstly check calculate particles weight by density and select sand. Now let's check activate self collision which will make sure that the particles can collide off of each other and then also activate particle linking. Because we only work with one particle system, we don't need to activate collision with others or linking with others. The one value you should change in the particle linking menu is the search length value. A good value for this is somewhere around 3 and 5. And for this I'm going to choose 4.5 because I found this to be fitting in our simulation. Now we won't worry about these other values today, but if you want to change them they are pretty self-explanatory. Now let's scroll down and you can see that under UVs we have the option to bake UV at ending and the current UV map is called UV map, which is the standard name. For this you will have to have a model which is unwrapped and this model is as you have already seen. So let's check this because I want the particles to have the same texture as the model in the end. Okay, the next value we have to change is the substeps. Basically, the higher the substeps, the stiffer the model will be. So I will change this to 10 for now. Now we can already start baking, but I want to set the end frame to 20 for this tutorial. So let's click on this button and see what happens. 
You can see that the baking process has started and the particles are just falling down right now. And now they are colliding with the ground, which is awesome and exactly what we want. Okay, the baking has right now finished and if we play our animation, you can see that this happens. And I actually find this quite fitting because, I mean, this is supposed to be some kind of sand. And now we want the particles to have the correct shading. So let's first scroll up and disable show emitter if it isn't already. Now let's select the sphere and give it the same material as the Coca-Cola texture. Now let's open the shader editor and you can see that this is the material. And everything is controlled by the texture coordinate. If we now select the can and change our viewport display back to rendered, so we have all the spheres right here, and for this we have to go into cycles, and now switch over to rendered, you can see that we get this. Let me just quickly load in an HDRI so we can see it a bit better. Okay, again, we get this. This is a problem, I would say, because the texture is not resembled correctly. You can see that on the big sphere, the whole texture is displayed on the sphere, which we can, by the way, also smooth right now. And this is not what we want. Basically, every sphere has to have its own little part of the texture. How can we do this? Well, if we select the can and in the molecular script, press set active UV, we can actually, in the material on the sphere, use in the particle infos node the angular velocity as our UV map. So let's just plug this in and let's see how our can looks. And there it is, we have the texture mapped correctly on our particles. Great, now we are basically ready to render. But there's one more thing I want to talk about, which is this panel down here. Basically with this panel you can calculate your substeps and particle size based on the number of particles. In our current particle system we have around 83,000 particles. But what if we wanted to have more particles? Well, we can just plug the exact number of particles in this slot right here and then our current substeps. Now we can for example turn up the grid resolution to get more particles and then plug in the targeted number of particles in here. So let's for example say we would have 1 million particles in the end. And you can now see that to get the same simulation you will have to set your substeps to 23 and multiply the particle size by around 0.45 which you will have to do here for the viewport display and of course here for the render. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how you can use the molecular script to create granular simulations. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you did, consider liking and subscribing. And we will see us in the next video.